podcast. Well, thank you everyone for joining us. It is 12.01 on uh, Wednesday, February 8th. Uh, and on this rather nice winter day, <laughs> we're going to have a webinar about assistive technology for medication management. Um, I have turned on the live captions and I'm going to um, start recording. And good, okay, good, it's, it is started. So um, this webinar will be recorded, um, a captioned version uh, with audio transcriptions will be available on our YouTube page uh, in about a week or so. Um, I will also be uploading a PDF version of this presentation to North Dakota Assistive's website. Um, and Minnesota will also upload a copy so you can access that. It'll have all of the links and I'll try to make sure it gets sent out um, in the follow-up email tomorrow, okay? Um, so uh, just a quick introduction, a little bit about me. My name is Courtney. I am with North Dakota Assistive. I have been um, working in this AT realm with North Dakota Assistive for about 10 years, and I'm currently our training specialist. So I'm here to provide training opportunities. And joining us um, for the first time is Minnesota STAR, which is Minnesota's assistive technology program. And I am going to allow Jameis uh, to introduce himself quickly. Um, we are going to be partnering together um, going forward on these webinars. Jameis, go ahead. Awesome. Courtney, thank you so much. Um, for some reason, I can't turn on the video. So I think that's something that on your end that needs to happen. Um, but uh, I'm Jameis Werenberg. I'm an assistive technology specialist with the Minnesota STAR program, like Courtney said. Uh, I have been uh, working in the field for about five years. Uh, in my previous role, I worked in uh, um, a rehab facility called Courage County Rehab Institute in Minneapolis, Minnesota, uh, where I was an assistive, te assistive technology specialist there as well. So I'm pleased to be here with Courtney and I will jump in wherever I can. I'm also gonna be the moderator. So if there's any questions, please feel free to, to uh, type it in the chat and I'll make sure to interrupt Courtney and, and get those questions answered. Awesome, thanks Jameis. I think I might've fixed the camera issue. Oh, there, there you we are, go. I see you. Hi. Hello, awesome, wonderful. So yep, at any time, if anyone has questions, please feel free and go put them in the chat. We will do our best to answer them. Um, you can also contact us afterwards via email if you would prefer that method. Okay. So getting into assistive technology for medication management, we, we all know how important a good medication compliance routine is to keeping us safe and independent at home. So when I, as an AT specialist, am looking at a medication management uh, system for somebody, these are the things that I will ask myself. So I'm going to encourage you when you're considering the person you're supporting to ask yourself these questions. Um, I'm also gonna upload a PDF version of this document with the medication management considerations to our website. So you'll be able, you will be able to download that for future use. It's so thirsty today. Um, so first off, we wanna ask ourselves, um, does this person that I'm supporting, do they need just a reminder? Do they need a medication organizer? Do they need an actual dispenser? Or do they need a combination of all of those things? How many times per day are they taking their meds? Um, if they need a dispenser, an organizer or dispenser doesn't need to be locked. Are they likely to um, double dose on accident? Is there someone um, else who's living in the home that might be uh, might abuse that person's prescription drugs? Um, and then we think about uh, the actual components of the device. If it's a dispense, uh, dispenser with spots for the pills, how big of a space do we need? Do they take a lot of large vitamins and they need a large pill dispenser or is it just a few small pills? Um, do they have other meds that they take um, such as insulin or an ointment or cream that wouldn't fit in a dispenser? 
I want to think about their dexterity for sure. So um, especially if I'm considering an organizer or dispenser, if the person has a lot of difficulties with their fine motor control, um, can they get in and remove pills from that specific dispenser? Um, are they going to be able to fill it? Then we want to ask, how's their vision? Are they going to be able to uh, see the reminder app maybe or the reminders they're getting? Um, are they going to be able to know that they're accessing the correct pill compartment? Um, if they're getting a medication reminder, how is their hearing? Are they going to be able to hear that reminder? Uh, do we need to consider a vibrating or a flashing option? Next page, I'm asking, um, how is their attention span? Is it possible that they might take their pills out and then get distracted by something and forget to take them? Um, on the same note, like how is their a short-term memory? Are they likely to remember that they forget that they've taken their pill and accidentally double dose? Um, so this is important for me this morning. <laughs> I almost took my medication twice because I couldn't remember if I had opened it because my mind was distracted. Um, and it's really not fun for me when I take my meds twice. Um, and for some people, it's very dangerous if they do that. So, um, you know, consider that. Um, for the person's memory, if we're supporting them and giving reminders, do they need a reminder of special instructions um, for that medication, um, such as make sure you drink a full glass of water or you don't eat any grapefruit when you take this medication, that type of thing. Do we need to support them with some verbal or written instructions for their medications? Um, next question is about filling the dispenser if we're going that route. Um, are they able to fill it? Is it a family member? Is it a public health nurse? How often are they, is someone able to support them with filling it if it's somebody else? And then is that person doing a compliance check and seeing, oh, it looks like you keep missing your Tuesday morning doses. Um, so is that something we need to consider? And then lastly, um, looking at monitored solutions. So if we're looking at someone we're supporting and we need to know that they've missed their dose so we can say, uh, call them or a support worker can go to their room and tell them, hey, Donna, you know, it's time for you to take your meds. Um, let's get that done. If we need a monitored solution, we want to make sure that we know that. Um, and then who is it that's being alerted? And then we'll look at different ways they can be alerted. I always get so thirsty when I do this. Okay, so I'm gonna jump right into some AT. Um, the assistive technology for medication management, there are a thousand and one, 2,000, 3,000, whatever. Tons, tons, tons of options. Um, so I'm gonna talk about just some examples of different types of options. It's by no means extensive. If you do um, quick internet searches for these types of things, you'll pull up hundreds, if not thousands of results. So these are just examples to give you an idea of what to look for. So a lot of people just need a type of reminder. Um, because, you know, we get distracted. We need a reminder to take our medication. Um, the left image on the screen is of a watch. It's like a silicone band. And it's called the tab time. And all it does is it displays the time. Um, and then it can vibrate up to 10 times a day for an alarm. It doesn't say what the alarm is for. It just vibrates and gives that haptic feedback to a person. So if that's all they need, they just need a friendly little reminder, a little beep, beep, beep on their wrist. Um, and by beep, 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 I mean a vibration because this one doesn't beep. <laughs> um, then the tap time might be something to consider. On the other hand, we could go a little bit more advanced with um, a medication reminder watch. So on the right side of the screen, I have an example of a watch from the company Cadex. Um, and these are available through the manufacturer ePill um, and probably many others. But this Cadex watch 
uh, this particular one is looks like a basic wristwatch um, with a digital watch face and you can select for the alarms to either vibrate beep or both and there are different uh, reminder watches for eight to 12 medications a day um, you don't have to use all the alarms so if you take meds five times a day you could use a, an alarm watch that has eight reminders and only use five Again, if you have somebody that is um, a little forgetful or has a short, short memory, um, this next slide we're on talks about timer caps for pill bottles. So I'm gonna tell you about a couple of things that I watched on TikTok and that's how I found out about them for assistive technology. And the, the first one in this presentation I'm gonna talk about is this timer cap. So on the, the left side of the screen, I have uh, an image and it's four pill bottles and next to it are four different colored pill bottle caps. And these timer caps, they are just a digital stopwatch. And all they do is display how much time it has been since that last pill bottle was open, that pill bottle was last open. So me this morning, um, I really had to think about it if I took my meds or not. If I had a timer cap, I could look and see, oh, yes, you did take this two hours and 37 minutes ago, because it would, the timer cap displays how much time has passed since it was last opened. The nice thing about these is that they're very simple, they don't require any programming, and they're still child safe. Okay. On the right side of the screen, I have another example of a time cap for a pill bottle. This one's from ePill, and it is a basic medication bottle with a cap and the cap has a um, digital display that shows the time last opened. Um, so it's not child safe. So if you live in a home with a child, make sure you're considering that. My daughter's starting to climb and get into things. So this wouldn't be a good option for me unless I kept it locked away. Um, so this e-pill time cap, uh, like I said, the display indicates the last time that the bottle was opened and it'll actually show the time of day. So as opposed to the timer cap that, that shows you the duration of time that has passed, uh, this will say last opened uh, 12, 28 p.m. And it also um, will tell you the day. So um, on the cap there, it has the initials for the days of the week. And I'll say 12, 28 p.m. on um, Monday, for example. So this one requires a little bit more programming, but it's got more features. Um, and you can set up to 24 reoccurring alarms a day. So it could be once every hour if you needed. Some more options to help uh, folks that may just struggle to remember if they have or have not taken their medication are some of these analog dose trackers. And I do analog in quotes, air quotes, because I didn't really know what else to call them, but they're just kind of basic little trackers. People use these um, kind of sliding mechanisms to indicate if the dog was fed, the dishwasher's clean. Um, so I just have a few examples. On the top left, we have the take and slide medication tracker. This is actually, um, a, a little sticker or it ap applies with a sticker you put it on the side of your pill bottle it's got all seven days of the week and then it's got toggle slides so once you've taken your slide your medication for that day you move the toggle slide over and it shows red to indicate that you've taken it um, if you haven't taken the medication yet move the slide it's green so okay once i've taken my Tuesday dose, I slide it over, and now it shows red to indicate that I've taken it. They say that these um, are restickable. Um, I'm sure you could just get some tape and stick them on there too, if they're not. So that is the take and slide medication tracker. On the top right of the screen, um, I just found these and they are called pill it scratch off stickers. 
Um, so if you have someone who's really into scratch offs, <laughs> these are just stickers that you can apply to a pill bottle. Um, they list the seven days of the week, and there are four rows for, um, say, four different weeks. And then when you've taken the medication for that day, say Tuesday, we're going to scratch off Tuesday, and it will reveal um, an icon of the hospital symbol. Um, those can be cut, and you can have, say, if you take a medication twice daily, you could cut that sticker in half, so um, you can have two rows of uh, per week, two week rows, and uh, and then not have to use the rest of the sticker on that pill bottle. You could apply it again the next week or a new one the next week. And then a, a third option um, that I found, which has an atrocious name, is called the pill popper dose tracker. Um, like I said, I really hate this name, but what it is, it's um, a little tag that it has a rubber band essentially around it. And you can place that rubber band around the neck of a bottle, um, or it could be a lotion or a cream. And then the tag itself has um, poppers, almost like a fidget popper type of thing for each day of the week. And so you can, if you take medication once a day, you can pop down that day once you've taken it. Um, it has two additional dose spots. So let's say you take that medication three times a day, you can push the popper down for that day um, as the first dose. And then a second dose, you would press the number two popper. And at the third dose, you'd press the number three. Um, what I like about this is it can fit on different types of bottles, um, or it could be a good option, say, for someone who's taking um, cough syrup, which is the example they have it on in the screen, or if you have like an ointment um, that you need to take and you can't remember or apply and you can't remember, um, that might be a different option. On this next slide, we're going to just talk about basic pill organizers that I'm sure almost everyone's familiar with. Um, there are thousands of options out there. So when you're when you're considering just a basic pill organizer, make sure that you look at the number of times a day that a person takes their medication. So if they take it four times a day, we need a dispenser with four times. Um, so keep that in mind. And then also you want to make sure that they're going to be able to open it. Some of them can be really stiff. And if you have someone with arthritis, that might be an issue for them. So make sure you're, you're considering how they're going to be able to open it. And then also how they're going to be able to fill it. And if they are visually impaired at all, how they're going to be able to differentiate between the different days. Is it large print? Um, it, does it have braille? There, are there other adaptations that we can make to make sure that uh, it is able, easy for them to uh, know that they're on the correct day. So on the left side of the screen, um, this one's called the Easy Dose Push Button AM PM Pill Organizer. So it's a twice daily pill organizer. It's uh, two rows of Sunday through Saturday AM and then there's push button to help you open it. Uh, and then on the right side, we have um, the e-pill five times a day, seven days a week, um, large pill organizer. This is kind of like a little travel system. So there are seven different pill boxes um, for the seven different days of the week. They're all different colors and there's five compartments in each. And they all slide into this little uh, folio type of organizer. So you can easily take it with you. Uh, the whole thing, say if you're going on a trip, or you could pull out just that day and stick it in your bag. Okay, so um, if you have someone that takes meds frequently and they need a little bit more than a pillbox organizer, um, we can consider an organizer that has a reminder to go along with it. 
Now we could use our, some of the reminders we talked about before, like that tab time vibrating watch or the, the KDEX watch and use that in conjunction with some of the pill boxes we've seen so far. Or we could look for a system that's got one integrated. So I just have an example of one of those systems. This is called the Med Center Monthly Pill Organizer. Um, Med Center is a brand and they have several different um, configurations of these pill organizers. So this organizer has um, pill boxes for 31 days of the month. On one side of that pill box is uh, red and the other side is green. So red to indicate you can flip the pill box to indicate it's been taken, green to indicate it still needs to be taken. So you can, you can lay out a person's medications for the entire month. So this might be a good option for like a public health nurse or a family member who's supporting someone. And then uh, to go along with it, this med center has a, an alarm that can go off and it can go off uh, four times a day because this pillbox system is meant for four times a day, morning, noon, evening, and night. And so the alarms state the day, the time, and which dose to take. So they would say it's Wednesday, uh, the eighth, time to take your lunch meds. Um, so that can help you. So you would locate the eighth pill box, which is indicated by the number eight on the pill. And then you would find the noon compartment and take those pills. Um, so that is just one example. They have extra large versions. They have travel versions. Um, they have a watch you can use instead. But this is a combination where we're giving the reminder as well as the organization. Next option I have up is called the MedQ. Um, this is another type of pillbox organizer uh, that includes a, an integrated reminder. This system, um, it's got uh, twice a day. Um, you can set it up for either, well, it's got two weeks. So you can do twice a day or two weeks. Um, and so there are compartments for each day. Um, and those are labeled with Braille. And what's nice about this system um, is that it, it displays the current time. It also displays the time that the next uh, medication alarm is going to go off. And then when that alarm goes off, it will actually give a, an a, alarm sound and color, highlight the compartment that corresponds to that. So on the picture, the Thursday slot um, on one side is what the current medication is alarm is for. So it's lit up red and there's a little icon to indicate that the bell is going off. Um, the alarm volume for this does gradually increase. Now, if you have someone who's got a, a severe to profound hearing impairment, we'd wanna make sure they can actually hear it um, before going with a system like this. Um, but it also has that flashy light indicator. Um, I like that this is battery powered and they say that the battery can last about a year and a half. Um, so we're just kind of adding a another level of support for medication management. Okay, the next item I have is called the Sagely Smart Extra Large Pill Organizer. I don't love the name of this because it's, when I think of a smart pill organizer, it has more features than this, but I'll explain what I mean by that. Um, so the Sagely pill organizer is a either uh, twice daily, um, one week twice daily or two week um, pill dispenser. So there's uh, 14 compartments and each container has two compartments. So there's one per day of the week. And you can actually push pills down into this for filling. So that would be nice um, for someone who might have just de some dexterity issues, especially if it's a family member, say, that is filling for the person who's taking the meds. 
So I do like that. And these pill compartments are quite large. They say they can hold up to 10 large vitamins, fish oil supplements, which I can't imagine taking 10 fish oil supplements at one time. Makes me want to gag. Um, so they can hold a lot of pills. And what Sagely uh, consider smart is that they have a free companion app um, that works on both iOS and Android devices um, to remind a person to take their pills. And it can also indicate um, if there are medication uh, um, complications that might occur. So if you are prescribed a new medication and you enter it, it can it tell the app can tell you if there's a counterindication for it. So that's a pretty cool feature. Um, hey, Courtney, the app, question. Yes. Um, so the pushing the pill in, is that like a rubber membrane or how does that work? Do you know? Yeah. From the picture, um, it looks like it's like a rubber membrane that you push I, it through. Yeah, I think it's like a rubber membrane type of thing. Okay. It's not real stiff. It's kind of um, more of a soft rubber membrane. And then um, the pill compartments, so the, the seven pill compartments for the days of the week are actually magnetic to hold them on to the organizer. Now I have seen um, a, a few reviews that say it's not a very strong magnet. So um, something to keep in mind. Yeah. So that is the Sagely um, pill dispenser. And so that's a dispenser that gives app alerts. Now, this dispenser, even though it has a companion app, the companion app doesn't give you, wouldn't be something that a caregiver could monitor um, to ensure compliance. So keep that in mind. Doesn't mean they're not gonna bring that feature out in, any day now, so. And then the next screen I'm going to talk about are trusty MedReady. Um, so some of you may be familiar with North Dakota Assistive Senior Safety Program. Um, and if you are familiar, you've probably seen the MedReady uh, medication dispenser. Um, this is a, a round, um, so round locked timed medication dispenser. So it's probably about... 12 inches or so uh, diameter. It's got a tray that you can fill uh, that holds 28 doses. And then on top of that is a, a cover, a solid cover. And the cover has a, an opener for the compartment. So you can set um, up to four alarms a day. And when the alarm goes off, you uh, will need to push open the cover to turn the alarm off. And then you have access to just that compartment for those pills. Um, so I've seen this distributed hundreds of times through our senior safety program. This device has been around for a good long time and hasn't really changed, um, but it works. Um, there are also cellular and lanular, landular, that's a new one, landline um, monitored options available. Um, when they are monitored, they do require a monthly monitoring fee that you pay to the company. Um, and there's different features for the monitoring depending on if you're getting the cellular option or uh, the landline. But something good to know. And this dispenser is also locked. Um, so if you have someone who might be prone to fiddling with their meds or going ahead or behind or something like that. Um, it is a locked option. Now, with that being said, um, if you have someone who is dead set on getting in there, um, you know, it's probably not going to keep them out if they're going to throw it or pry it with the tools. So um, that goes back to kind of knowing your person um, and then figuring out what they need. Okay, and the, the next option I have is kind of like the next step up. So this is a medication dispenser system and it is called the dose flip. 
the dose flip is a smart medication dispenser, um, meaning that it will, it can track if a person has taken their, taken their dose at that time and send an alert to a caregiver um, or someone who's supporting that person. So like I said, this is a lock time dispenser. Um, it's, it's quite small, it, it fits in your hand. Um, it's about five inches. Jameis is our lovely demonstrator there for us. So Jameis is holding it up the uh, dose flip. And also, it it's a locked device. So you unscrew the plastic top at the top, fill your medications in, and then tighten it. And there's a little key that goes in a little hole right on the top that locks that for you. Yeah. So that's a super nice option. That one can be locked. Then it also yeah. comes with kind of some accessories too, Courtney, that um, make filling it a little bit easier. So when you have the cap open and you put this over the top, it aligns with the the bin the the numbers that correspond with the inside. You can throw yeah. your pills up on top and then scoop them into the into the tray. Yeah. So Jameis was holding a um, circular um, tray. And it is labeled with different letters. So um, in this application, it's A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And then there are different colors. Um, they're alternating colors. So this would be for someone who is taking meds, say, twice a day. Um, and so it helps you line up where those pills need to go. Um, so anyone who has filled um, some of these big pill compartment organizers <laughs> knows that it can be a little easy to get um, mixed up on which, which dose you're on. So I love that feature. Um, so this device is uh, portable, it's battery powered, three to four day battery lifespan. Um, like I said, it's a smart dispenser. And so it is actually connected by a cell towers. Um, if you are in really rural North Dakota, we know that um, sometimes cellular monitored options won't always work. So it would be something we definitely want to have you test out, um, especially thinking about that Southwest corner of our state. Um, hopefully we just keep getting more towers, but um, that cellular monitoring, what it does is it, it allows a caregiver to support a person if they have missed a dose. Um, so they could give them a call. They could do a, uh, the caregiver could do a drop-in call um, on an Alexa device to, to help that person make sure that they take their medicine. Uh, the dose flip, you can also export data so um, and see if, for example, there's patterns. Okay, so they're always missing their Friday uh, noon medication. I wonder where that is. Maybe they like to go play Pinnacle at Fridays, on Fridays at noon and they don't remember to take it with them. Maybe that's it. So maybe we can make a change for them. Um, this company provides any adaptive equipment you might need to use uh, to access a device for free. So Jameis, I think, has the stand um, there as well. So he's holding up the stand, which holds the um, device and um, makes it a little easier to see the flashing indicators for the alarm for someone who might be hearing impaired. And then it's also the stand um, will tip the device. Oh, I love it. I feel like I'm on the airplane getting a, a <laughs> de seatbelt demonstration. I feel uh, like that's Savannah a White. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's this, the stand can tip the device and pour the pills into a little uh, metal bowl. And that bowl is set in a polar. I don't know. It fits it's perfectly like a underneath tray. the stand. Yeah. So yeah, it goes underneath the, the actual device and you can just pour, tip the dose uh, pills right into the cup, into the cup. And then pull the pills out and take it from the cup. So that's really nice dexterity helper. Um, and then you can also get extra trays for pre-filling, all sorts of things. Um, the dose flip is a 
um, the monthly fee device. And I know that they're working um, with Medicaid coverage, um, some waiver coverage in different states. So that would depend on the state you're in. Yes, Jameis. I see you've unmuted oh. yourself for me. Yep. No, nope. I was just uh, answering kind of false alarm. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Um, so um, the nice thing about the dose slip, uh, the company said that they will offer free trials. So if you uh, want to try it out with your person before you buy it, um, you can do that through the company. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to talk about some um, other types of systems. So apps, reminders, smart assistants, that sort of thing. Um, so you could use these in conjunction with the pill box, um, or you could use them on your own. Um, the first option I have up on my screen is called the MetaSafe app. So this is a free app for iOS and Android, um, but to really unlock the features, there is a monthly monitoring fee, or a monthly fee, excuse me, not a monitoring fee. The MetaSafe app, um, allows you to enter all of your medications to get a reminder for each. When you enter your medication, um, you enter the name, the uh, dosage, uh, the time you take it, and then it also allows you to uh, put a picture uh, or an icon, I should say, of what the pill looks like. So it's an oval pill, uh, white oval pill that I take. Um, so on the screen, the image I have in the middle um, shows a screenshot of that app. It says what time it is. Um, and then it's got three apps or three medications li listed underneath of it. So the first medication is loratadine, 10 milligrams, take one, originally at, I can't read that, eight o'clock. Um, and it's got a, a white circular or oval pill next to it. Um, and then it's got another medication that is a square yellow pill. Monte, I'm not going to try and pronounce that, but um, can you get the gist? Tells you the dosage and then when to take. Um, what's fun about this app is that you can customize the reminders to have um, different voices. So they, they say you can use Darth Vader. So I have a little picture drawing of Darth Vader on the screen because it, I personally think it'd be kind of funny to have Darth Vader telling you that it's time to take your medications. Um, they also have Elsa or you can do a nagging mom um, which moms everywhere are taking offense to right now. Um, a nagging mom. What about a nagging dad <laughs> or a nagging sister? Um, so that's kind of fun um, way you can help support somebody they get Darth Vader telling them it's time to take their meds. Um, and then this app will send an alert to a family member or caregiver if that dosage is missed. So the person would tap and indicate that they've taken the medication. If they haven't done that step, um, their family member or caregiver will get notification. In the paid version, um, you can get, I think it's 20 supporters for a person. 20 different people that can support that same person. Um, this app alerts to drug interactions. Um, it can tell you when it's time to refill your medications. Um, so it's just got a lot more features that are included. And that is MediSafe app. I'm gonna wait and see how long the MediSafe app sticks around now that um, Apple has released iOS 16 and the medication feature that's built into the health app. So I um, just advanced the screen and um, this slide talks about iOS 16 plus watch OS 9, which these are the current operating systems for the iPhone and the Apple Watch. Um, and with that current operating system update that came this fall, uh, the medication feature came out. 
So what this medication feature does is it integrates with iOS's native health app, and it allows you to enter each medication that you take um, for reminders. So um, it could be a medication, it could be an ointment, it could be um, a, a daily vitamin type of thing. Um, so you, to enter, um, you go into the health app and then the medications tab, and then you can either scan your pill bottle um, using your phone's camera, uh, and it will search for that prescription name and dosage. Um, some things uh, it won't add. So for example, um, I was adding my vitamin D supplement and it um, didn't add that supplement, but when I tried it with prescription medication, it was able to read that label. Um, so I can manually add say that vitamin D. And then once you found the medication, you can indicate the dosage. Um, so for example, 50 MCGs of my vitamin D3. And then you are brought to a screen that brings you to frequency. So the, um, I have a screenshot on the left um, that talks about frequency. It says, when will you take this? And then your frequency, you select the frequency. So it could be every day, it could be twice a day, it could be weekly, monthly, et cetera. And then you also will select um, what time of day. Um, so it could be several times a day. And then you in enter the time of day and then the number of, um, or what the dosage. So is it's one capsule or if it's um, half a tab type of thing. Then you're brought to the next screen, which is the middle screenshot I have there, where you get to choose the shape. So this is great for recognition. Um, so you get to choose um, from a whole ton of different shape options that they have. Uh, find the one that most closely matches the pill you're taking. And then it brings you to the third part, um, which is choosing the color. So for example, my vitamin D, it's kind of clear, but it's kind of yellow. So, uh, and it's an oval capsule. So I chose um, the light yellow um, oval capsule, and then I put it on a blue background, but you can customize that to make it a little bit easier. Maybe you have it so vitamins um, always have a blue background, and then very important pills have a red background, or something like that, if that might help you. Um, and then um, when the alarm goes off uh, to take the medication, your iPhone will give you an alert, time to log your medications. And so that shows up as a push notification on your iPhone. If you have an Apple Watch, it will also show up on your Apple Watch. Um, so on the very bottom of the screen, I have a picture of a person wearing an Apple Watch, um, and it's got the medications reminder showing up. It says medications reminder, time to log your 10, 10 a.m. Um, medications. And then you are able to just scroll and tap log all is taken or um, postpone, that sort of thing. Uh, this medication feature does allow you to export your data for a month or for a week, I should say. So if you're, again, looking for trends, you could export that data and then provide it to your doctor or someone who's trying to help support you. Um, it allows you to see potential drug interactions um, when you are entering medications. Um, so really a lot of the same features as the MediSafe app. Um, the MediSafe app will alert a caregiver or someone else to, if a dose has been missed. And while right now the iOS um, health app medication feature does not. There might be a way to set up a shortcut with it, but I just thought of that right this moment and I will let you know if I find something on that. Okay. Um, this next section is about using your smart assistants. Um, so I have a picture of Rosie from the Jetsons, um, the OG smart assistant. Um, so Alexa, I'm gonna turn mine off because she's listening to me. 
Alexa, Google Assistant, Siri, Bixby, you name it, um, your smart assistant can probably help you with it. And so I'm going to go over a few of the different ways that you could use a smart assistant to support medication um, compliance. Um, so I've chosen just to highlight Alexa, um, but the other uh, smart assistants do have a lot of these features, very similar features, and I have them linked in a later slide. So I just chose to use Alexa, um, but that does mean they're not available on the others. Um, so one way you could support medication compliance using an Alexa smart device is to set up a reminder. Um, so reminders uh, can be customized quite a bit. So I have a screenshot image on the um, screen on the right side of the Alexa reminder um, page. And here I am creating a reminder. It says, uh, remind me to, and then you are able to type out what it is that you wanna be reminded of. Um, so I have take your evening meds. And then I can select if I want that reminder to appear at a time or, or at a location. So um, I'm gonna select time, so at a time. And then you get to choose where that reminder announces from. So um, I have a variety of Alexa devices in my home, and but I'm usually upstairs and can often hear my kitchen one. So I'm choosing to have it, this reminder announced from my kitchen echo show. Um, then you have your start date and you get to choose how often you want this reminder to occur. So maybe daily, maybe twice daily. Um, and then you set the time that you want it to occur at. Um, and then if you have multiple family members in the house that have profiles, you can choose who that reminder is for. So for example, my husband and I both um, have Alexa profiles set up in our house. So I can choose to have this reminder show up for me. So it will say, Alexa will say, reminder for Courtney, it's time to take your evening meds. Um, some further customizations with Alexa reminders. Um, you can choose to have Alexa make that reminder announcement once, twice, thrice, or um, persistently for an hour. Um, it can also give you like a follow-up reminder. It can send a push notification to your smartphone. Um, it will send it to your um, smartwatch too, if you are connected. Um, so like an Apple watch or a Samsung, a Galaxy watch, um, even some of the Fitbits that have that integration. So you can get it as a push notification um, or a text and or a text message. Um, so that's kind of a nice way to set reminders. I so far haven't reached a limit on how many reminders Alexa allows you to set. So it could be like 50, um, but I haven't reached the limit yet, so. Okay, I just moved forward a um, screen and to talk about Alexa routines. Um, so once again, Google Assistant, Siri, they have routines that you can set up. It's, I just chose to highlight Alexa. So what I think is fun with routines as opposed to reminders is that they can be really customizable. Um, so if you have someone with low motivation or who needs additional supports, than just a, a voice announcement reminder, a routine might be a better way to go. Um, and I did a whole a webinar, um, half an hour webinar um, about routines that you can watch on our YouTube channel. And I'll make sure I link it in the description. Um, but why I like routines for medication management. Um, you can set uh, those medication uh, reminders to be triggered at the same time every day. So it could be every day um, at this time, it's going to go off. And then once that trigger occurs, we can determine what kinds of actions you want Alexa to take. So on the screen, I have a routine that I created called vitamin D. And um, this routine is triggered every day at 7.28 AM. And then once it's triggered by the time, 
so I don't have to do anything because it's connected to that time. Um, my Alexa device will say, time to take your vitamin D and then play the song, I'm Walking on Sunshine from my Spotify. And so I'm just kind of giving myself additional supports um, and it, making it kind of fun. I could um, set it so that it flashes my light on and off. If I were to need additional supports, um, I could have Alexa announce, you know, time to take your XYZ medication. Remember, you need to take it with a full glass of water or time to apply your eczema ointment to the backs of your arms. So you can customize what it says um, to help support the person. Um, you could also have um, it say, if you had a smart plug, you could have it turn the lights on and off. Um, if you have music playing, it will stop the music and make the announcement. Um, so different ways that can help a person remember to take the medication and it can make it kind of fun. Okay, um, again, with routines, you can choose which Alexa device you want it to um, go off on the routine. So um, it could be if we know we're usually in this spot at a certain time of day, we'll have it go off on that device. Okay, um, so like I said, um, other smart assistants, Google, Siri, Bixby, have very similar features as far as reminders and routines. Um, I'm not touting one over the other, just wanted to use Alexa as an example. Um, I myself love Siri. I'm kind of a diehard Apple person and I love the Siri reminders. Um, the nice thing I will say that I've discovered about using reminders um, to help with medication compliance as opposed to the iOS health app um, is right now, at this point in time, the iOS health app only allows um, you to list one medication regime. So if you have someone who is changing medications and it's a bit of a process, you know, we're gonna start decreasing this dose and then we'll do that for a week and then we decrease this amount and then we're gonna add another one, et cetera. Um, you really can't use the health app for that to set it up um, all at once. You would have to go in, say, after the week and adjust the dosage and such. But what you can do is use iOS reminders and set that reminder to be for the first, for this week, I'm going to remind to take this medication at this dose. Then the second week, um, the reminder changes to this medication at this dose, et cetera. So uh, just a little caveat I found, um, I think in you know, two years from now, that feature will be integrated into the health app, but right now it's not. Um, I just have a few minutes here and I wanted to talk quickly about a couple more options to help with medication management and administering. Um, the first one is the scriptability program. Um, so this is a program that provides accessible prescription labels uh, to folks with visual impairments. Um, so they have Script Talk, which is a program that comes with a label identifier. It's a, not a very large device, um, kind of like a couple smartphones stacked on top of each other. And then you have your pharmacy would use these special labels. Um, that would tell you, and the, the script talk would read out loud to you what the, what the medication is, what the instructions are, et cetera. Um, so that is free through participating pharmacies. So you would just go to script talk um, and you can find uh, script talks website, you can find participating pharmacies. You can bring it up to your personal pharmacy that you use. Um, same type of program through skipability is called script view. So um, the image on the bottom right side of the screen is of a pill bottle with a, a label that is extra large and bold font on a white background. 
So it just makes it easier to read um, for someone. Um, there are also, I think, braille labels, um, bilingual labels. So uh, different options depending on the need. So it's called scriptability is the overall program. No, oh, I love it when I click in the wrong spot. Okay, and then one more slide is just about some other assistive technology that might help um, with medication, um, such as an eye drop applicator um, to help someone get those eye drops actually in their eye. There's lots of different styles. You can 3D print these if you have access to a 3D printer for very inexpensive. Um, so the image on the left is of a, an old, uh, older woman and she's using an eye drop applicator to insert eye drops into her eye. Um, middle image is called a pill pack puncher. So this is for some dexterity or fine motor. If you have a hard time getting those pill packs out or pills out, um, these punchers slide around a um, pill pack and there are four different sizes and then you push down on them and they punch that pill through. Um, and there's a little, little bowl that goes with them. I, I've, I've seen 3D printed versions of these two. So again, if you have a 3D printer or access to one, really inexpensive as opposed to this $18 combination. Um, and then if you are, uh, if you have an ointment or a lotion you need to apply and um, reaching uh, where you need to apply it is difficult. You could consider a long handled ointment or lotion applicator. There's tons of different options available online. Um, there's some usually like CVS or Walgreens has options. Um, so the last image I have on the screen is of a, a person holding a lotion applicator to apply lotion on their back. Okay. Um, so that was a lot of information, um, but we want you to know um, that you're gonna have access to these slides and everything. Um, you can watch the recording. Um, and if you'd like to try any of these medication compliance systems or AT for it, um, both North Dakota and Minnesota offer um, free short, uh, short equipment demonstrations. Um, and we have short-term loans of various uh, different devices. So give us a call and we can help. Um, we have a couple of potential funding avenues through North Dakota Assistive for these devices. Uh, I'm just gonna very quickly go through them. So the first one is for North Dakota residents only. It's our senior safety program. Um, you have to be 60 or over and not living in a skilled nursing facility. There's a quick application form online and you might be able to get um, an assistive safety device such as a medication dispenser for free through that program. The other program North Dakota Assistive offers is our Possibilities Grant Program. It's a grant program and it's open to North Dakota and Moorhead, Minnesota residents. Um, so there's an application that you can find online. And then we have our contact information. Um, so, like I said, I'm Courtney with North Dakota Assistive. Um, you can reach us by uh, visiting our website, which is ndassistive, A -S -S -I -S -T -I -V -E org. Call us at 800-895-4728. Um, send us a letter, whatever um, we would like to hear from you. Um, and I'm going to let Jameis close out um, with the Minnesota information. And I just want to say thanks to everyone for being here, and we hope you found this helpful. Yeah, this is Jameis. Um, Minnesota also has a few programs that are similar to yours in North Dakota. So if you are interested in learning more about those, please reach out to, to myself, um, and I can direct you in the right uh, direction for those. So um, any last questions? There wasn't any during the presentation. Um, so if anybody has one, um, will you share the slides? Tori's asking if you'll share the slides. Hi, Tori. Yes, I will share the slides. I'm going to uh, include them in the follow-up email. You should get tomorrow.